Hey guys, this is the AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is a single phase 240 volt blower motor out of a packaged air conditioning system. Alright, you can do the same thing with a, a blower motor out of a fan coil or air handler, alright, as long as it's all PSE, permanent split capacitor blower motor. So these types of blower motors actually need the capacitor in at all times, so it needs it for startup and to run. So if your blower motor is just maybe humming, all right, when you have the power on, then it possibly is a bad capacitor. But what you're going to do for safety's sake is you're going to turn the power off first, all right, and then we're going to start doing our tests. So first things first, turn your power off. After you turn your power off and you confirm that it's off, you can go ahead and feel the uh, blower motor wheel and make sure that it's not wobbling or uh, stuck or frozen you know um, and it's not rubbing up against the squirrel cage after you do that then we're going to go ahead and check the capacitor all right so with the power off you can go ahead and disconnect the capacitor right here you can pull those terminals off in any way you just want to be careful not to break the uh, speed terminals this particular capacitor right here is a 15 UF, which means 15 microfarads, all right, and it's 370 VAC. So if this capacitor was bad, we would want to replace it with the one that's the exact same, or it could be um, 370 slash a 440, or it could be a 440 cap. That would all take care of this scenario, all right, since it is a 370. If this was a 440 um, VAC cap, and all you could do to replace it is a 370 slash 440 or a 440. Now you could not put in a standard 370 in there. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get to it. So testing this out, you're just going to short across here with a screwdriver without paint on it. This has to be bare metal. And the reason you're doing that is most of the power is already um, taken out of the capacitor the last time that this blower motor was turned off. Um, just because after it's off, the only other source of power is from this capacitor and it bleeds it basically by running still. Um, but we're going to short off any remaining little tiny bit of voltage uh, just to make sure that our measurements are correct. So then you're going to turn it to MFD on your multimeter. And you're going to press in real nice and hard. All right? And you want to give it a little bit of time. All right? You want to give it maybe 5 or 10 seconds. You know, get a good accurate reading. Make sure your probes are pushed in real tight. Uh, making a good connection. So as long as this measurement is within five to six percent of what is stead, stated on the rating plate, then it's good. So this one right here uh, is reading 15.05, all right, and the actual is 15 MFB. So this capacitor is good. So this would not be the problem, all right. The next thing we could do is see if this motor shorted to ground, and in most cases, what's going to happen with that? Well, all cases, it's going to go ahead and uh, pop the breaker or pop the fuse. Um, if the windings inside shorted out and did not touch the metal on the frame, then the motor would not be working. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to test the windings and just see if they are touching the ground or not. So in this particular blower motor, all right, these are the speeds, all right, and this yellow wire is connected to one of the legs of the 240 volts. All right, so we can actually just test our yellow one first here and make sure that you turn your multimeter to resistance when doing this or continuity, but resistance will give you your finer readings. All right, so we're going to put one probe in the yellow wire and one on the housing of the blower motor and you see OL, which means over limit, so that's good. So that wire is not shorted. Let's check this. That wire is not shorted. That wire is still reading OL. Well. That's good. And that wire is not shorted either. Okay. And just so you know, you would get the same reading uh, from your brown slash white wire as you would with your yellow wire because. Let's just, let me just show you this real quick. If you take a resistance reading between these two, oh, actually I need my alligator clips for this one. Uh, if you take a resistance reading between your brown slash white and your, what would be your common here, 
for a 240 volt blower motor, you shouldn't get really any resistance reading, okay? Because they're attached inside the blower motor, all right? If you were to uh, grab this brown wire that does not have the white, you're actually reading through um, inside and you are at 20.5 ohms of resistance, okay? So right at the entrance of the motor, your brown white wire for your capacitor and your, your common for your 240 volt blower motor, those two are actually attached, okay? So when you test your yellow to the frame of the motor and you read OL, you're gonna get the same thing there. All right, so we've, we've checked to ground and all the windings are not burnt onto the housing of the blower motor. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our speeds and we're gonna check our resistance values. What you should have is you should have the higher resistance value between your, what will be your common and your low speed. And then as you go up to your higher speeds, you're going to get uh, a less of a resistance reading. So let's go ahead and check those out. So let's check our yellow to red. And our resistance reading is 17.5 ohms of resistance. Now let's check your yellow to blue. And we have 14 ohms of resistance. So you see the ohm rating is actually going down when you get to the higher fan speeds. Now our next one will be black and that'll be our highest fan speed. All right, and so that one will be less resistance than the blue wire. So we got 9.7 ohms of resistance. Okay, so that's also how you can tell which is your higher uh, blower motor speed. So this is going to go get attached on one side of the, the contactor if it's, you know, on a uh, outdoor package unit. And then depending on which... Um, which speed it is, all right, which speed you have it set at, that would determine which other one is going to get normally powered as well. All right, but uh, this one will get powered with one leg of the 120 volts, and one of these will get powered with the other 120 volt leg, okay? Wherever this connects at, this one right here, it's also going to end up uh, connecting to this inside the blower motor, and it's going to come through the capacitor and it's going to come into the start winding in this uh, blower motor. All right, but uh, that's that's how it's done. So you're going to find a problem in there somewhere, meaning that either the blower wheel is frozen because the bearings are frozen. Um, you're going to find that, or you're going to find that one of these windings is shorted out with the ground of the motor, and that's why it's not working. You're going to find most of the time it's actually the capacitor. And like I said, that was one of the first things I told you to check for after checking to make sure that this was was loose like this, you know, was, was moving I mean, uh, after the power's off. Um, or you don't have the right resistance reading between your common and your, your run wire, okay? So one of those things is is the problem on a PSE blower motor. If you're finding that you're not getting the right airflow out of the registers, then you know the, the, it may not be the actual blower motor that's the problem. It may actually be uh, the friction that's applied across the filter. It could be dust, right, on the wheel here. All right, you want to clean that off because that would end up slowing the airflow down. It's not going to slow the blower motor down, but it's going to slow the actual air molecules. Um, coming through your ductwork down. All right, uh, there could be an obstruction in the ductwork. There could be that the ductwork is just too small. All right, it's just size too small. All right, those are all possibilities. Um, there could be dust on the um, side of the evaporator quill. Maybe somebody wasn't uh, changing the filter or maybe there was no filter for a while. Uh, that could be a problem, you know. It could be something in the ductwork that's stopping or slowing the actual airflow down and it may not be that the motor is the problem so even if you do power this in its highest fan speed and it's just not pushing the air that you want it to push uh, then you might want to start looking at the duct distribution system uh, and seeing you know where the air might be blocked at you know uh, maybe it's the return grill maybe that's too small um, or somewhere's in the duct
All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.